Well, the, the biggest problem with bigger places is that uh, is usually you're dealing with such a professional kind of atmosphere with the uh, club and, the, and the, the security and all the rest of it. Everybody's more down to business. It's kind of a colder feeling. It's like uh, you got security guys screening. Like you, you wouldn't be able to get backstage because they'd be going, "Oh no, you're not on the list." Uh, you know, it's like it's bullshit. And to me, um, as a fan or as a journalist or uh, a filmer or anything else, you, you should have access to the people that you want to talk to, or at least if they don't want to talk to you, then at least they can tell you personally. But you don't have some guy telling you that you can't talk to the band, and you go, "Well." Uh, why don't you ask them? No, I don't even have to ask them. Man. I hate that shit. Success, oh. 
but uh, I like being accessible, uh, you know, and uh, and, I, and I'll, just the intimate feel that clubs yeah. have. Yeah. Large venues will never have that. They, they just they can. It's just built into the built into the beast. And it's usually so structured. You get there and they go, yeah, you're going to be on from 9:45 to 10:45. Well, our set's an hour and five minutes long. Well, then you have to lose two songs or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just all this. It's like these laws, you know. And I, half of playing music, especially an underground thing, is you're breaking uh, the rules. You don't want to, you know, we're non-conformists to begin with already. Otherwise, we would sign to Sony to play pop songs and be happy. You know, it's like, fuck, you know, this is not the shit we want to be doing, you know. That's why we don't go that route. So, yeah. But, um, uh, you know, I really like the, uh, the fact that most of the people that have followed us around have followed us around from the beginning or from the and, and not just the beginning of the band but the beginning of the first time they saw us once they saw us once we, there's very few people that don't come to see us a second time you know we have a lot of people that are oh yeah well okay I, i'm into hip-hop or i'm into what something different than dead moon but the people that are actually into our kind of music and uh, stuff are usually sold on it once they see us and that to me is real important instead of just being a flash in a pan rock band that somebody goes oh this is the next big thing okay cool I'll see that and then, oh I've seen it okay now I'm out looking for the next thing so uh, it's real satisfying to us to know that uh, we may not draw tons and tons of people but the people that we do draw usually are people and they're there because they want to be they don't really care if it's a full house or half empty they're there because they're really digging what's going on instead of looking around going well making up their own mind oh, right? yeah exactly not going you know? off of a uh, so I like to think that, that we have smarter fans than, <laughs> than a lot of other a lot of other bands do because uh, I've just seen too many bands that, that only draw as long as people are coming and once people stop coming to their gigs or if they don't do that well of a gig those same so-called fans aren't there the next time because wow it wasn't the place to be I mean anymore. yeah so um, you know that's, that's really cool.
know personally people like oh, friends of yours? Just about know? everybody I know. <laughs> really? Like, well, I mean, like who's know, gotten big has, has 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 had to you know either sell out, conform, do whatever. And to them, and, and you don't it was realize worth that it. going in. It's just you kind of yeah. learn that after the fact that that's the reality of the business, and then it really is a business on that level. And you're just caught up in it. You're stuck with dealing with it. It's, and it's the and, little things. And, and it's hard to go yeah. back. You really can't go back. It's the little things that happen. You make that jump, you're there. You know. Here's the, what pisses me out. It's the little things that happen. Okay, say you walk in and um, I, I, whatever your job is, but say say you you uh, were. Uh, into uh, uh, some sort of a, a, a dot-com kind of a situation where you were doing the artwork for a dot-com company. You never seen, um, but what you do is very creative. What you, you're creating um, images and uh, uh, whatever, art, some kind of artwork thing. Okay, so you go to this company and they go, oh yeah, oh your stuff's fantastic. And you go, fuck. And the guys are going, yeah, we're going to start you out at 20 bucks an hour. And you're thinking, oh my God, I'm making $5 an hour right now. This is a dream come true. Uh, all you have to do is uh, shave your beard. And you're thinking, okay, well, I like my beard. And they want me to take it off. And why in the fuck do I have to? I'm not being seen by anybody. But you think, okay, if I got to get this job, okay, I'm going to shave my beard. So you do that, you, you take the little baby step. The next day you go and they go, well, okay, you have to lose the glasses. We don't like the glasses. Okay, well, I already shaved the beard so I can do the glasses thing. That isn't that big of a deal, I'll get contacts. The next day you go in, they go, well, you're gonna have to start wearing a suit to work. Okay, well, I lost the beard, I lost the glasses, okay. Because Within a week. Thing. Within a week, you look at yourself and you go, I don't know who the who fuck I? I am, okay? <laughs> You've lost all the shit, and, that, and that they start peeling the grape. Then they start editing you. And be, before you know it, you're a different person. The stuff that you used to do, that the reason that you got hired in the first place because they thought was really good, you're not even doing that anymore. You're, you're doing everything according to what they want you to do. And it's like... And then, and then you wonder why you get suicidal after yeah. about three <laughs> months. You start looking at sleeping pills, and I mean large bottles up, okay? You just want to go away, Promises 
dreams I've made I never thought you'd stay away Leaving me to take the blame I never thought you'd follow through God damn, I hate the blues You need human contact, uh, you need somebody to care about you, you need to care about somebody, uh, those things are really important. You need somebody you can sit down and talk to all night long, every night, whatever the fuck. Uh, unload uh, stuff off your chest, uh, you know, that's the shit to me is important. Uh, um, the rest of it's just all real hollow, you know. Uh, you drive up in a, in a Porsche and you meet some chick because she sees your car and you're going to get laid that night. Big fucking wow, you know. I mean, uh, who you know, spend $80,000 on a car to get laid, okay? I can never understand that, that mentality with guys. It's like, my God, you know, Jesus. We've been talking constantly for 37 years. We've been married 37 years, so it's like, you know. And we probably just repeat ourselves all the time, but we, it always seems interesting and new.
baby, we two are running out of town. Run, run, running out of town. Run, run, running.